Hey, thanks for tuning in. And while I have your attention, I would like to direct you over to Enter the Cromniverse Anthology Volume 1. Uh, this is a comic book that I am working on. We are raising funds through Indiegogo. And right now we're running the email list. So if you would please uh, check the description in the link below. I will have the email list for you to go sign up for Enter the Cromniverse Anthology Volume 1. You are not going to want to miss this. Crom is an internet troll. Uh, he literally lives inside the internet. He is a character created by uh, Pops Van Zant and brought to life artistically uh, by Edwin Artex Badio. And we are putting together an anthology with a lot of great uh, artists uh, like like Edwin uh, is is contributing. Doc Blaylock, I have a story. Uh, Eric Hodson, Paul Gomez. There are so many more people uh, that are joining in and helping to contribute stories to this anthology. So please check the description below and click the sign up link. Put your email in, and we will update you on everything that is Crom. Thank you. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another exciting episode of the Play Nice Podcast. I uh, am here today with another very special guest, um, a friend of mine from way back when, an old touring buddy. Uh, Man, no, uh, we went on our first tour together, and also before that, we ran the whole southeast of the United States, playing shows all the way across the uh, southern port of the portion of the United States. Uh, so yeah, here here with me today is uh, musician uh, extraordinaire, spoken nerd Nathan Conrad. Thank What's you very up, much. Y'all? <laughs> yeah, we gotta put in the applause track in, like uh, whenever we edit this, right? Like, so uh, when you introduce me, it's like, yeah. Uh, since you requested it, I'm gonna look for that, and uh, awesome. I will. Uh, I'll look for the applause since uh, since since you requested. Since you know, I do uh, actually drop a bit of uh, post production uh, <laughs> for the interviews. I will find some. Uh, Audience applause just for you. The uh... post production extraordinaire right here, right here. Uh, oh wait, hold on. Uh, uh, right here. Uh, <laughs> one of the directions. Uh, the everything, uh, it... <laughs> everything's different here on the internet. There I it know. is. There it is. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. They should put that on a t-shirt, or you should put that on a t-shirt. Everything is different on the internet. Yeah, like you know all those people that are real cool on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's cool on the internet everybody's cool on the internet. <laughs> have you have you ever met someone who like in real life they're awesome but then on the internet they just suck it's like your least favorite person to hear from on the internet uh no not really because most of the people i've interact i've seen on the internet uh that i like and then i've interacted with them off of the internet have been cool uh and there's not been too many people i've seen online that aren't too uh too good um so no fortunately but i can imagine uh i, I think i'm probably in that category uh of, nah, you're all right on the <laughs> I, i've never i've never seen anything from you where i've been just like oh is that right? like occasionally there'll be someone you'll meet that's just like really one of the nicest people and but then on the internet they're they're just a hor horrible jerks you know they're just like uh against any sort of fun or anything you you find oh, out oh you know I I mean? like, yes i stay away from those people uh <laughs> i i'm too damn old to to not be having fun uh you i have mean to have fun. like i mean that's one of the reasons i actually ended up moving back east was because like uh, the uh 100 of the fun that was out west and like in la just got sucked out and there was uh nothing left and 
I was starting to lose my mind. What little you know, bit of it I had left. It's very funny. I had a, uh, I had a boss, an old boss, like one night he reaches out to me and this guy is 100% just like a redneck. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and he's, you know, maybe in his fifties or so. And he, he hits me up and he goes, Nathan, I'm in LA right now. What do I need to do? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, what's there to do out here? And, and you know, when I think of myself in LA, I always do the exact same things, which, it, which are, uh, I walk around and I get very sweaty and I walk for miles and miles and I go to, uh, record stores and I eat like Mexican food. And then, uh, yeah, apparently also occasionally I meet up with you and I just fall asleep as soon as you get there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, no, I mean, that sounds about, uh, it. I mean, there's Griffith park. That's kind of cool. That uh, is cool. but now, I mean, dude, you want to stay away from Hollywood, man. Like, yeah. uh, Oh, that place is a, that place is a nightmare, man. Like, uh, Gower street, which is usually the street you go on. If you want to get a picture of the Hollywood sign. Right. Uh, and so, like, starting at Santa Monica, which is a few blocks away from Hollywood, going from Santa Monica all the way up to Fountain, which is uh, a block, block or two past Hollywood, it's nothing but tents, man. It, oh, like, man. Like, people, like, setting up, and not even real tents, man, like like tarps with, with pallet boards up there. It, 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 people just, like, shitting out in public, and it, it's... Uh, it's really sad. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it, one, yeah. There may be people that do all that for fun. You know, people do enjoy camping. Well, uh, the people that are out there are not right. Uh, and I'm not trying to be, and it's not, I'm not being funny or, or anything like they need help. Uh, like, it's not like they're functional homeless where it's like, Oh, I'm just down on my luck. I'm, you know, going to be like, you know, sleeping in my car, sleeping out on the street while I kind of get my shit together. Like the, like a lot of the people there actually need help and, and there's no programs there to help. Like the, the program is to just not arrest them when they're sleeping on the sidewalk. Like that's the, uh, extent of what it seems like they're, they're willing to do is just, uh, and they, um, and, and they decriminalized theft under a thousand dollars. So, wow. Yeah, before I left, I was tempted to just start like running up in stores and jacking them for nine ninety nine and running out and uh, yeah, get into crime. I, it it's basically legal there, like because anything under a thousand dollars, they're not going to statement uh, uh, that there were no jobs in this country except for crime and that they were trying to make that illegal. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't think he ever got into crime, but no, no, the, uh, but I thought about it. I, I was like, yeah. well, since, uh, you know, nothing's going to happen under a thousand bucks, like, like, you, yeah, uh, get my groceries. Right. I don't need... right. <laughs> hey, I work at the grocery store. Uh, you know, so uh, I gotta be against crime on that level at least the, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. I, I, you, ever, I... you ever notice people are always like, very like people that are very pro crime and pro stealing They they always have these things where like, I know a lot of musicians are like, Oh yeah, you should steal from, from the grocery store, you know, cause they're a big evil corporation. But then, then the same people are just like, you know, Spotify is stealing all of my money by putting my music up there for free. But then everything <laughs> else is like this basic human right, you know, um, like, man, it's a human, it's a basic human right to, to have food. So it's okay if I steal, um, uh, you know, I think music's a basic human right, so uh, we should all give our music away for free, right? It's yes, I uh, yes, I mean, and I'm only saying that because so far all I've done is give my music away for free. <laughs> 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 so, but I do no, I do feel uh, actually like I, I know we're being funny, but I do like I honestly do think those are two things that should actually kind of kind of be free. We should all move away from grocery stores and stuff actually and start growing our own food and food and sharing with our neighbors and, 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 and like with food as well as music. So yeah, those things should be free, but I do understand the, the business and, 
The only like, thing bad about growing your own food is it's a lot of hard work. Have you ever have you ever done it? I mean, I'm not saying I have. I've done very little of that, but it is man, it's just a big pain in the like living off the land. What a pain it, in the butt. It's uh we used to raise cows. Uh yeah. when I was a kid, we didn't have enough land for uh, like crops but we had enough for for cows and so we always raised our own beef for food and so a lot of times like you know that was uh one of our side hustles as, as a family uh to make some cash and also put some food on our plate uh because like. you, you know we were my parents and we didn't have a lot of money growing up and so grow and so you know they're farmers so we grew our own food you know didn't have to pay we never had to pay for meat uh, growing up, you know, except unless we wanted like chicken or pork or something, but we always had, uh, we always had beef and steak and, and like, I remember complaining about it as a kid because yeah. like, all we had was hamburgers and steak and like my friends got to eat chicken and like hot dogs and stuff like that. And I remember like being like, mom, steak again. <laughs> <laughs> why can't yeah. we have chicken and then you know we're because it's one of those things as a child you're not necessarily thinking about and then uh, now i'm like oh dude i'd, I'd love some free steak right now <laughs> i remember uh i was talking to a musician once and he was talking about he was kind of in the full-time touring mode and he was complaining about the guy he was touring with he said you know all that we ate every day. He, he said, you know, he put me up. I had to live with him for a little while. And every day we were eating carne asada and I got so sick of it. And I was just like, man, you poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, what, what if we flipped it where all music was free, but you had to make it yourself. So you had to only listen to your own music. Uh, <laughs> what was you that? know what? I'm that I'm not necessarily opposed to that because then it would probably get a lot of these clowns out there that are just putting crap out to uh, think about what they're writing and making a little bit more. You know, like if they're like, I don't know how many musicians I've run into and they're like, oh yeah, I don't like listening to my own stuff, and then I'm like, well, why would I want to listen to your stuff? That's a good point. I I enjoy listening to my own stuff, and you know who else <laughs> likes too. To <laughs> Kanye listens to his own music and in my opinion it doesn't get much better than Kanye. Right. It, it I mean, it just And that doesn't. is my mentality like with art and like artists is like if you're not making something that you yourself would enjoy, like why are you trying to push it on other people, man? Like have some mercy. Like if it's something you don't want, other people probably aren't going to want it, but if you like it, then somebody else might like it. And if at the very least you can at least be proud of making something that you enjoy, you know? True. I was, uh, you know, I was reading a book that Stephen King wrote called Stephen King on writing. And one of the biggest things he says in his book that is, is that if you're going to be a writer, you need to read a lot, you know, every day, like you need to make reading part of your practice. And I don't know if you've uh, seen any of the film reviews I do for ghetto blaster or any of that. So, so I've started kind of like doing a little bit of writing. Yeah. And I've found that that just helps so much to, you know, when I, when I'm reading a lot, it, it helps mm -hmm. me, you know, just kind of, just kind of gather those literary skills. And I, I think it, it, it helps with music a lot too. It's funny because I knew this guy that was writing a book and I was asking him, you know, how it was going and stuff. And he said, well, one thing that, that I'm struggling with is I write about these characters and I can't keep up with which characters, which, and, and, you know, cause there's so many characters in my book. And I thought that sounds like this is going to be a terrible book. You're the writer and you can't remember the characters, but you're expecting like your reader, you like, to remember yeah. these forgettable, you know, characters that you're putting out there into the world i mean can you imagine uh yes i can imagine because i've seen some of what hollywood is putting out lately uh oh yeah it's oh my god just the lately i've been on the uh this huge independent kick like independent artists independent music independent comics independent TV shows like I'm more invested in these a-holes on YouTube putting out their own content 
than I am anything like Hollywood is doing because everyone that seems to be working out there in putting out product for the mainstream, it's like they've never taken a writing class. Like, not even a basic, like, English 101, like, this is how you put a story together. Like, and it's mind-numbingly frustrating as 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 someone who considers themselves to be fairly creative and, and talented and knowing other people that I know are talented and and you should be seeing their stuff and where I'm just like oh my god and these yahoos are out there putting out stuff that can't even complete a full story or make an interesting like like concept the characters are boring and it so yeah anyway independent arts all the way man like there uh, you go what do you think the best thing you've seen that's come out lately uh cobra kai cobra kai yeah that's a good show for uh mainstream uh stuff uh cobra kai Mm -hmm. like uh like with the whole trend with redoing uh everything from the past uh, everyone needs to take notes from Cobra Kai where it, it like the way they executed it is very respectful of the source material. It makes it, it, it actually even makes the source material better than it was when you, than it was in the eighties. Yeah. I, I can agree with that. I, I do think they did a really good job on it. You know, another, uh, movie that they did a good job on. And I honestly don't think it could have been better. Uh, that new Ghostbusters thing. Have you seen that yet? No, that is another one that I've heard uh, about that I think I would really like. I just haven't had a chance to get to the movies in forever. Um, and so, well, I mean, I like I just got out of the West. Like everything, they don't really let you, didn't really let you out in public much. <laughs> so, yeah. The, uh, it's, it's, so, no, but I really want to see it because. I heard a lot of really good things about the new Ghostbusters movie. And uh, and I've actually been waiting for spoiler reviews on every movie and TV show before I check it out now. Because I'm tired of wasting my time. <laughs> and so I'm like, I want to know everything that's in it. And everything I've heard about Ghostbusters Afterlife sounds awesome. And I'm looking forward to, to actually uh, checking that out. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um what uh do you have a shopping mall close to you in elizabethtown or is there one up there (laughs) it's the most sad sad shopping mall i've ever seen in my life uh i walked in and i was just like somebody gonna stab me here uh the uh in e-town the mall isn't the place to go anymore uh like uh the one thing i will say about e-town is it has grown exponentially and it's actually pretty awesome uh, because the downtown area and like all of the like smaller like uh, strip mall areas and stuff are popping. Like we got some really good bars and restaurants uh, that are just amazing. Uh, but the mall is sad. <laughs> the- that is sad. I don't know if I can live in a town without a good mall. Um, you know, I really like our mall. It's uh, the Opry Mills Mall. I don't know well, if you've ever been there. Yeah, uh, a long time ago. Uh, I think before it was as big as it is now. Uh, like yeah. It was like 12 years ago I was there, maybe. Oh, yeah, it's about the same, I'd say. But, man, the only thing about it that that makes me, uh, that, that I don't like, is that they play, like, this bummer country music over the PA in there, just about any time I go in. So you yeah. go into the small, which to me is like, how, how much more upbeat can you get? You know, you've got stores, you've got bright lights, you got the movie theater, you got every kind of fast food you could want. You got some good restaurants, you got some higher end stuff, the ice cream shops, you know, you can get your hair did, like everything is going on at the mall and over that whole thing. And I even like country music, but over the whole thing, the soundtrack to that is, Oh, don't have you and my <laughs> life is boo. I mean, really, like, I, I can't believe it. It's like, man, you guys should be playing Kanye in here or, or like, at least like some something, anything. Yeah. <laughs> I would even like, go for, for the music they play at Whole Foods. 
records other than that are, are no music but just to play this sad dumpiest country music and and even like it feels even like our malls kind of divided so like one side of it's like you know bass pro shop and stuff like that and i get that so it's kind of and then the other side is like the theater and stuff at least like divide the music too you know <laughs> right the wait uh is it in Nashville or Cincinnati, the uh, big pyramid bass pro shop? The uh, pyramid. That is actually in Memphis. In Memphis, the pyramid one. The big pyramid. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's in Memphis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, used, that used to be a really cool music venue, too. Like, But, well, now it's the bass pro shop, which I would play there. But I'd play at a bass pro shop. Yeah, I'd play there. Yeah. Like... Let's let's work on it. Let's let's try and uh, let's let's see who we got to get a hold of to start uh, yeah. start booking shows at Bass. Actually, that would be a good idea because they do hold a lot of people love Bass Pro Shop, man. They should they have do. shows. They, they do. should have shows. The uh, Bass Pro Shop 2022. I'm into it. <laughs> yes, Bass Pro Shop tour. Like uh, hit up all the Bass Pro Shops in the uh, in the U.S. I'd do it. I I had an idea to do like a record store tour, but instead of playing like regular record stores, I wanted to play all of my shows in Walmarts in the CD section. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I, I, how how well did that go? How far did you get on booking that? Uh, I I never booked it. I just had an idea. Oh, okay. Okay. It's still there though. It's still an idea. I, I don't know how many CDs. Well, Walmart's actually selling vinyl these days. Did you know that? Uh, not no. Uh, but I know Target. Uh, I haven't been in a Walmart in God, uh, years, man. Uh, you're back in Kentucky now. You better head over there. The uh, huh. <laughs> um, I know that Target sells vinyl. Like I, I do, I do know that. Um, because. I think most people that are buying physical media would prefer a vinyl to CD. Yeah. You know, like that, that's kind of how I am. Like uh, a couple, about a year or so ago, I, I was like, okay, from now on any album that I buy where I'm like supporting the artist or whatever, like I'm just going to buy a vinyl instead of the CD because I'm only listening to the MP3 and I'd rather keep the vinyl and save that, you know, cause oh, I totally. got the, uh, yeah, because I, you know, I got the uh, the last one that I got was the uh, the MF Doom Zarface album that j- was just released, like like right after Doom passed. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good record. It, yeah, man, it was the. Uh, sometimes I still kind of hope that he's uh, just just pulling a villainous trick on us. I wish, I wish. You know, it's it's kind of funny a friend of mine and I were talking the other day and he was saying how he wishes that there would be just like one more really good Wu-Tang album to drop. And, you know, I drop an album constantly, man. Like he said, really good one, like really good one, you know, like Uh, I like all their new stuff. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not hating. This was just another guy's perspective. Right. right. I said, I think really the trick to that is if they had a really good producer produce it all. And I, I couldn't really think of anyone other than doom. Like, but you know, no doom, but, but a, yeah, man, that would be, that'd oh, be amazing. Yeah. Right? A doom tang album. Yeah. Doom. Tang. Yeah. I mean, did, he produced some stuff for Ghostface Killer That was, mm-hmm. that was actually really good. The, his, uh, man, didn't he do some really cool stuff for, uh, most deaf? before he was uh before most changed his name i think so most def changed his name yeah it's uh yasin bay now oh i didn't even know that yeah that's why uh i keep i keep forgetting to check on that like because he's he's actually done some stuff put out some stuff as yasin bay oh okay is it good uh, I don't know. I haven't really checked it out. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, like, everybody else keeps, like, jumping, like, you know, like, jumping up uh, in in queue for my attention. Uh, you yeah. know, like, the, because uh, then whenever I think about it, I'm like, oh, cool, there's a new, there's a new uh, Doom, uh, that new Doom's, the Zarface thing. And then, like, Aesop Rock keeps dropping albums. And then, like, uh, did you like the album he did with Blockhead recently? 
I did actually. I did. Like it slowly crept up on me uh, because I'm still sort of stuck on Spirit World Field Guide. Yeah, same, same. It's like I and I keep trying to not listen to it, but then I'm like, <sighs> hit play and and. But I do really like that uh, the Garbology album, man. Like, yeah, uh, those those Blockhead beats are like really good. <laughs> like, just the production on it is is stellar. Yeah, the production's amazing. I, uh, you know, I when I first heard it, I was just kind of blown away, and I, I kept listening to it. But then, um, yeah, I do keep going back to Spirit World Guide. Um, in a way, I feel like the Garbology is similar to the Malibu Can record, which I also liked a lot. Right. But, um, but it, it, you know, I do feel like garbology is a little more versatile on the types of songs and Mm -hmm. and whatnot i mean it was a little more of an open landscape but yeah but i mean aesop rock he's one of those guys that just keeps pumping out good music it seems like uh yeah or or at least it has a certain quality of excellence in the lyricism itself right and i feel that he does constantly make some steady progression and improvement with all of his product like in in one way or another whether you like it better or worse like there's an element of it that has improved from the previous album that he worked on like i i feel like like the production level and just like the storytelling quality that's in uh spirit world field guide is like kind of a step up from impossible kid yeah it's kind yeah. of a vibe all the way through. I I listen to a lot of music while I ride a bicycle. Um, mm-hmm. And I know that sounds dangerous, but I have a speaker that goes around my neck like this. And so I can still hear stuff that's around me and still hear the music. But Oh, I'm dumb I, enough to wear headphones while I'm riding a bike. So yeah. you ain't, you're more responsible than I am. Well, I'm dumb enough to do that, too. And that's why my <laughs> wife got me a speaker that goes around my neck christmas uh okay uh, okay dude that's why i need a lady in my life because uh somebody should have married me off in my early 20s like i'm not capable of taking care of myself so uh yeah the uh th- yeah so thanks to all the good ladies out there that's right <laughs> <laughs> cool so you nice so you have the so you listen to uh music while you uh ride yeah, your bike oh, with sorry. the uh yeah, so that one was kind of like almost the perfect cycling music. And I think part of the reason that album means a bit to me is one night I went on this ride and it was it was kind of, we were just getting into fall. So uh, during the summer I can ride, you know, for eternity and it doesn't get dark until, you know, nine o'clock uh, or eight o'clock anyway, but, but I can just keep going. And right. it, it was fall, so it was getting dark a bit earlier. And I remember I... I rode out to the, in this field, there's this land close to me that's going to be a park in the future. And uh, they are dumb enough to leave the gate open one day to this <laughs> land. And I, I just went out there and just checked out everything. So I was riding my bicycle out there one night or one day and and it got, it actually, it, I got really lost and it got dark on me. And I remember I had that speaker around my neck and I was, I was listening to that record and it just got pitch black, man. <laughs> and I remember just like feeling eerie and just really loving the lyricism on that, you know, and everything about it. Just the whole aesthetic was perfect, but I did oh. make it home. Okay. But it, it was definitely dark. <laughs> it was, it was a good soundtrack for what you were going through at the moment exactly like because you're yeah going on a journey trying to find your way through like hoping yeah. nothing like w- too weird happens but still looking for adventure and and trying to yeah no i dig it man the uh i love it when uh when, when things like that line up uh when i uh, lived in la i would walk constantly uh for exercise i call them like city hikes and so i'd go out and put on headphones and i would just walk for like two, three hours, like, uh, you know, go as far as I can, you know, and then come back, you know, end up in all kinds of different weird ass neighborhoods. And I loved it when the music I was listening to would kind of sync up with wherever I was at and kind of fit the vibe and create this little, like, uh, its own like soundtrack for me. Like, like I was in my own little, uh, adventure film.
Yeah. I'm with that. You know, I had a, I, something that I've been like pretty aware of is like when I'm on the bike or hiking and I'm listening to music, everyone can hear what I'm listening to to some degree because I'm bumping it, you know, on this little speaker. Oh yeah. And a lot of times when I'm riding in my neighborhood, you know, I'm listening to like, um, let, let me think of an example. Like the new Rick Ross album has been very high on my list. And I've been listening to okay, that. Cool. Or I, I was uh... listening to it a lot. Yeah. It's great. But uh, some of the language on there is is a little, you know, like, I don't know if I want my neighbors to hear me listening to this. And I'm, I'm passing by little kids and stuff. And, you know, so I've, I've kind of had to be aware of that. And, and so I have to find music that's a little cleaner when I'm in certain places, you know, where there's going to be a lot of people around or when I'm at work mm-hmm. playing hacky sack outside or something, you know, and it really made me appreciate the value in like, like good Christian hip hop. Cause like, I, I want stuff that's going to bump a certain way. I don't want to listen to like, you know, just, just some nerdy, like whatever, like I I've, so I've started to really take to Lecrae for that reason. And I just can't help but think, I wish there was like a lot more of this, that, that felt this way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's, I mean, one of the reasons, well, one of the reasons I don't really uh, check out much Christian music uh, anymore is like, it, there's not much of it that I heard really like outside of like LA Symphony and Marzil uh, that I really dig. Like even going back and listening to some of the stuff I used to listen to where like there's not as much of it that actually holds up. Have you listened to any of the Reach record stuff in the last 10 years, mm-hmm. like Lecrae, Andy Minio, some of that? I, I got to be honest. I think that stuff's amazing. And I think when it came out, I wasn't ready for it yet. Um, okay. And I think, that, I think that I held certain values in samples and like kind of esoteric raps or whatever, you know, that I was that I was listening to. But I'm now like really discovering this world of hip hop in there that I, that I just never really spent much time with before. And I really love a lot of that stuff. I, mm-hmm. I kind of, it, it made me really see why people think so much of Lecrae and why he's been so successful. I mean, if for no other reason, then I want to listen to music that bumps in a way that makes me feel like I'm somebody and I'm not alone and I'm happy and I'm and I'm a winner. You know? So much hip hop is like loser talk, you know, like depressing, just like whatever. But like Lecrae has that aesthetic with those beats hitting. But at the same time, it's not raps about selling cocaine. So I can listen to it, you know, at my day job in the department without having to worry about, you know, ticking anybody off or a customer hearing it and <laughs> you know, right. calling or, playing or or whatever so i i'm actually starting to really appreciate like that whole movement and it and it was funny because i listened to a i was listening to a lecrae song the other day at the mall while i was riding my bicycle around the outside of the mall like i like to do and and he made a lyric like i'm i'm you know i own the label and i'm about to sign a bunch more and i just couldn't help but think thank god i need more of this and like you know i'm i'm really hoping cray if you're listening um i've got an album that really bumps and i think you should sign me to reach records i think you should consider it i think i think we're on the same page uh like let's get together let's have coffee let's let's drink japanese whiskey and and talk about the future you know i'm here let's do it lecrae i know uh i know you're listening uh i know uh you've been a fan of the play nice podcast for a while so uh so i hope you you and nathan can uh can set that meeting up uh mr lecrae you know, Nashville is known as Music City, and I live right here in Nashville. Well, actually, I kind of live on the outskirts of Nashville, but I'm a presence in Nashville, Lecrae. You got to consider that. So exactly. Just saying. Just saying. The, uh, let's, uh, yeah, he'll, uh, yeah, so he'll definitely, he'll, he'll, he'll hit you up soon. I, I have a I feeling. Think so. I think so. I think so. Because, so. you know, like I said, I'm pretty sure he's a huge fan. I mean. Yeah. And uh, why would he not? Why would he not hit you up? The uh, that is uh, 
Yeah, no, that is exactly... Uh, uh, yes, you recently put out uh, an album, a new album. Right? I did, yeah, Grapes. Yes, I uh, I feel bad that I haven't had a chance to uh, check that out yet. It's been kind of a whirlwind for me over the last yeah, you just moved. month or so. Yeah, and, and so uh, like I saw that and I was like, oh... I need to check that out. And then I haven't stopped. <laughs> I understand. The uh, And so, yes, Grapes. Uh, I like the album art. I can say that. Thank you. Yeah, my wife put Confident. that together. She's nice. incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. uh, one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite album arts I've ever had done, I think, actually. So pretty excited about the art. Check out the music, though. You might like it. I think you... I mean, I... Uh, you know, I've liked everything I've listened to thusly, so I can vouch for your music catalog and uh, and say that it is delightful. The uh, Is this one... Uh, did you uh, do this one with uh, Fake 4 also? I did, or? I did not. We actually went with a label called Audio Recon, and... Okay. They're great. They're they're kind of a partnership label that you know just basically you know prints vinyl with us and and we kind of we kind of partnered on that. They're they're an amazing imprint. Um, and anybody out there listening, you should check out the Audio Recon catalog. They put out a lot of Serengeti stuff. Um, let's see, uh, Id Obulus is kind of the dude. His his music's awesome as well. There's just yeah a lot of a lot of great artists affiliated with with audio recon and i uh yeah this this one was an album i did with this guy juan cosby uh from cincinnati he's he's a friend of mine that's a producer up there and we kind of had this idea i had this idea whenever i was running my label invisible library and i was like man you know what we need to do we need to do a mixtape because i remember there was a bunch of stuff in the news that m night Shyamalan was going to revamp tales from the crypt do you remember that yeah there's yeah. gonna be a there was going to be a Tales from the Crypt show, and it was going to be produced by M Night Shyamalan, mm-hmm. and and it was it was going to come out. And it was going to be the jam, right? He was going to have this whole like two hour block on USA or some network, and yeah. it might not have been USA, but whatever it was, it was this big rumor, and then it ended up not happening. So when that happened, all I could think of is like we we had just done a comic store day release with the label where we put out a compilation. And I thought, man, what if me and this producer did a Tales from the Crypt mixtape and then we'll, we'll try to sell it to um, EC Comics, you know, we'll be okay. like, there's a lot of hype around this brand. I was going to hit up EC Comics, you know, I was already in the comic world because because like, uh, you know, I knew all the guys down at Rick's comic shop here in Nashville. And I thought, man, this is going to be huge. And then I remember I, I was uh you know looking into it and i found out that actually ec comics went out of business in the 60s or in yeah in the 50s or 60s so i wasn't going to get any sponsorship from them or any kind of like that wasn't going to work out too well and then it turned out the thing with uh Shyamalan never happened so they never revamped tales from the crypt and all of it just went away so we had we had written maybe you know four tracks at that point and I, I said, well, let's just finish this album and we'll make it something else. And I, you know, we just kept working on music and, and it was kind of over the course of a couple of years because like we were working on it and it was kind of a side thing while I was doing, uh, I was working on the state parks record. And then as soon as the state's par- state parks record was finished, I had to like pretty much immediately change focus to the next spoken nerd record. Cause, and then at that point we started talking to fake four and we were like, okay, we gotta kind of pull the stops here and make this really dope and and like you know we were bringing in like horns and stuff so so all this time throughout these these uh two releases i I was kind of working on grapes on the side and so it covers like a few years of my music so anyway um that's kind of that's that's awesome no the uh that uh because i remember uh yeah because i remember 
you t- uh, talking about that throughout with uh, th- throughout the recording uh, of that because uh, I-, I know I've hit you up several times to uh, collaborate and you're like oh, I gotta finish this one that I'm doing first before I think about working with anybody else <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like all right cool cool the uh, and so yeah because I remember uh, yeah you remember you talking about that uh, like a-, a while back so it's. Uh, good to hear that you've uh, got that out and uh, and dig it. I will. Uh, I'll definitely be uh, dropping a link uh, so people can grab it uh, in the description. Awesome. <laughs> the uh, the uh, cool. So uh, how uh, have you started playing shows again? Yeah, I've played a few shows. Kind of the way it's gone um you know i at the, at the beginning of the pandemic i was just like absolutely not you know and when vaccinations kicked in you know i got i got i got a vaccine and i kind of left myself open to play a few things um so we we've yeah we've we've done a few things uh in and in the new year there will or we're in the new year i'm saying the new year like it was last year i'm living in the past right uh, but yeah Aren't now we I'm, all in some way we're, we're we're open for booking i mean i i'm i'm playing shows these days so yeah. okay nice nice the uh yeah because i know uh like talking to greg uh like a few times he's recently started getting uh getting back out and playing um and like i yeah i i'm actually gonna start playing shows here soon uh i i miss it actually the uh performing like i've been slowly working on two separate albums over the last like two years uh so eventually uh eventually i'll put them out uh hopefully at least one of them will be done this year um like one uh one of them all the lyrics are done uh it's it's just stuff that i've that just didn't work with other producers and so because i wasn't wanting to do any of the music for it and so um and so i've tried working with other producers and it just nothing just really worked out so i've got like a full album worth of lyrics that uh, i'm gonna actually just sit down and bang out uh like all of the music for it. I'm going to do like a, a live instrument thing uh, with it. Kind of go back to the old uh, ill gravy roots uh, where I was just doing like a, like acoustic guitar and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, the other one, I have another one. It's a weird electronic album that is, I'd say it's probably about 90% done. The, uh, like I've only got uh, like, one song that doesn't have any lyrics for it. And so, so are you going to be rapping on both of these? Oh yeah. Yeah. Or some rapping and some singing. How are you going to approach it? The, uh, it's all rap. It's, I wouldn't necessarily call it either of them hip hop, but I, it's all like rap versus singing hooks. Uh, the, uh, like the, the one album, uh, that is mostly finished it's all like uh programmed music with like 808s and stuff i dig it so it's it's a little bit different uh the uh that one is uh yeah like i've got one song that i don't have anything written like i just have a a a a hook (laughs) and so and then there's another one that i have the hook and a bridge uh but all the other songs are really done. I just need to take the time to do the scratch vocals for it to, uh, to, to smooth out all the music. Um, I like it. I like it. And so, yeah, cause I, uh, no, I, uh, I don't know. Never, uh, never quite give it up really, you know? Yeah. You just gotta do it. It's fun. The, exactly the because like uh like i was saying earlier i'm getting too damn old to not not have fun with yeah you, you with gotta as have much fun. as possible i mean why not you know yes like uh yeah because i've been um getting really heavily into the independent comics uh 
scene. Like I'm, I'm got a uh, anthology I'm working on with a lot of really cool people. Uh, enter the Cromniverse. Uh, yeah, I, I read about that. That's cool. The uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. The it's a fun character. A little internet troll likes to uh, <laughs> he likes to pop in and out of of uh, di- different dimensions, timelines whatever you name it he's messing with real people he's messing with fictional people like he just likes to you know knock over the dominoes and watch everybody scramble (laughs) that's cool are you gonna do an nft with it uh i personally probably not no uh but (laughs) the uh man i don't i don't understand any of that shit dude like i'm more boomerish than I am anything else. <laughs> like, uh-uh. The um like I was like uh mentioned before we started like I uh n- like a lot of the technical stuff like I just don't necessarily like doing it. Um you know, not to admit it, say it out loud, but yeah, like all the like the recording and the being able to edit and 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 knowing how to do computer stuff for it. I uh, like I don't necessarily like that I know how to do all that. I just sort of had to out of necessity, like, cause I really just want to focus on art <laughs> and making music and drawing and stuff. But you know, those, uh, those things cost money. And so either, either pay somebody or learn how to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very true. It's, it's, a uh, it's a challenge to do all the things yourself, but it's also a challenge on the pocketbook to pay someone. <laughs> so I mm-hmm. guess like my method is, you know, always kind of focus on what, what I'm good at, you know, and I have to kind of say sometimes um, for, for like, you know, different things like shooting music videos, for instance, I can make a music video, but I'm not sure how good it would be. And I'm pretty good at working with meat at Whole Foods Market. And uh, maybe I'll just do that and then get some of the money from that and get somebody that's pretty good at making a music video to make a music video for me. <laughs> that's right. kind of always, that's been my approach. But I do I do envy like people that can do like a lot of different things and the and especially where they're they're very good at a lot of things, you know. It's, it's kind of cool. I mean, I always envy people that can make really good beats, you know, and then, and rap over them. Like that's sick. Mm-hmm. I, oh man, me too. <laughs> me too. I, yeah, uh, the, uh, I aspire to be, uh, you no, know, I, I do look at a lot of people, uh, that in awe, um, like, cause, uh, man, I've, I've been getting more into broadcasting, you know, like doing the podcast and, and, and things and stuff like that. And I know that live streaming is is very popular and I it's really hard to to live stream. Um, like I, I've been on several like YouTube live streams and stuff like that with people, but actually conducting my own is is uh, yeah, like that's that's not my bag. I prefer to uh, do a setting like this that that's pre-recorded uh like i get to go back and just uh drop some compression on it and and smooth it out and uh yeah it it's hard so i i envy the people that uh are doing like talking head and live stream stuff because it it's it's not always uh yeah it it's difficult and uh i'm trying to trying to land the plane um so to speak uh it, it unfortunately to be able to like sell your product and like for me to get people to look at my comic books or get people to listen to my music like you have to do more talking like because people want to see what you're like in some sort of long form conversation whether it's a podcast or a, or a live stream um or things like that and so i'm uh you know, trying to work my way into that. I'll hopefully do some, uh, do some drawing live streams soon. The, uh, Oh, I think, I think we're, uh, the internet is, is, is glitchy. Maybe, um, the Chrome, was it the Chrome verse guy? Maybe Chrome. Yeah. Chrome. It's Chrome. He keeps, uh, on, on us. 
I know, man. Crom, dude. Uh, I'm drawing a book about you, bro. Ease up. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, yeah. So, have you, uh, have you thought about, uh, actually putting out a podcast or or do some kind of show? Uh, because uh, if I ever get monetized, I'm gonna start uh freestyling on live stream for super chats. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I've thought about doing it, and I would probably just do that if I had the uh, well, once again, you know, it's it, it's kind of there's a learning curve on knowing how to do everything there is to do with it, and mm-hmm. And then also just having time, honestly, like I have, I have so many like irons in the fire, like with, with doing a full-time job and, and doing music and then throwing in like, you know, the movie reviews and stuff that I do on top of that. Like it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff. Um, So yeah, but I have, you know, I, I definitely considered doing a podcast. I think if I had like, you know, someone that, could would just wanted to do the editing on it and stuff and just wanted to join in with me and and i'd come in you know once a month or once a week with like with a plan for it you know i could probably work it out but you know right now you know there's just it's a lot (laughs) oh no yeah it is that's uh like man it's uh it's kind of been uh like a uh, kick in my butt like uh today uh like uh this is my second one that I've recorded today uh and then like I uh, I've got one on Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh like next week is is just booked which is which is awesome because it it you know gives me content to put out which is what gets eyes on your uh your your stuff and i oh, want for sure uh so i'm very grateful that uh that i've been having people actually uh open to be uh to being interviewed and like because i've done some uh so far like i've interviewed some like pretty cool people uh i think and i'm that excited is cool. i'm excited about uh about more and so uh yeah, which the the podcast definitely uh, definitely helps with that because uh, it and yes, I know what you're saying. It definitely eats up like a good bit of time because uh, the uh, like when I'm running, uh, like when I'm rendering everything, like it kind of clogs up your computer, and then you know uploading all the the files and stuff makes it where uh, like uh, I don't know bogs down the internet. Anyway, producer yeah. problems. <laughs> producer problems inside baseball. The uh, I get the, it. So so yes, which hopefully people do appreciate. Like, cause something like this, uh, like even on a very amateur level, like th- there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Um, which is why I think I have an affinity towards independent artists because. I know how much work and time they're all putting into their own product and projects because I know they care about it. And, and so they're taking the time and, and like, you know, like doing it for nothing but the glory for right now. Cause it, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, doesn't, uh, doesn't always pay as much as you would like, but it pays in fun and, uh, yeah. and works towards, um, actual success and um and honestly uh with spotify uh i mean a lot of it is me listening to my own podcast uh from a different account on uh, one of my other devices <laughs> but but like i've been getting a lot of listens on spotify uh with the plain ice uh podcast that's so th- cool so thank you to everybody that has been listening uh to the plain ice podcast on spotify i i really appreciate you guys uh it's it's actually been awesome uh, watching the the numbers go up. Where I'm like, yay, <laughs> people are listening to it. Um, like like especially if uh, like if I see there's like a view or a listen on something, uh, 
uh, that like, like if a video loads in the middle of the night and I haven't had a chance to actually, uh, send a post about it and I see like, it's already had like a view or two and I'm like, Oh, awesome. Like somebody saw the, uh, the automated notification that YouTube or whatever sends out. And so that, uh, so everybody listening, thank you so much. Uh, while I'm at it, please like subscribe and share to all of your friends. If you enjoy this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) i dig it i dig it no i think uh i think podcasts are amazing and i you know i listen to i i don't listen to podcasts a lot i've actually listened to this podcast before um i listened to the the first greg episode Mm -hmm. uh quiet entertainer episode i listened to that the other night so um yeah i think i i think it's very cool and it's actually really nice like when you hear your friends on a on a podcast especially like in times where we don't all like hang out all the time you you kind of feel like you're hanging out with your friends um when you when you can listen to them in that way but but yeah i think i think with art you know everyone kind of has to find their place and what (laughs) what they want to do and then also kind of like what they're good at and what they're passionate about and you know that was that's kind of the thing you can't you know you can't always do everything but Mm -hmm. um sometimes there's seasons of time where you where you do a certain thing and you know right now like the filmology thing i do is like the main thing i write an article called filmology for uh, a website called ghetto blaster magazine and I basically talk about the movies that I see and stuff. So I actually just dropped an article today, which was the, uh, my, my favorite films of 2021. So, uh, that's been my latest and and that's, that's kind of, and so I thought about doing a filmology podcast and at some point, you know, maybe I will, but a lot of it's just, you know, going to be a timing thing and, and maybe, maybe a learning curve on how to do some things, you know, to, to make it sound the way I want it to. Um, uh, two things. One, uh, I will make sure to, uh, get, get me the, uh, the filmology link for the ghetto blaster magazine i'll make sure to put that in the description below uh so please click on that and and go check out uh nathan's um film reviews and also uh if you need any help uh getting stuff set up uh, i can uh impart my wisdom upon you to uh to get something like this going and and make it look super cool with uh you know, with however you want to, to run it, to make it, uh, yeah, we'll talk later and, and, we'll and talk. Defi- yeah, we'll talk baseball. later. I will, I will help you, uh, I'll help you get some stuff set up. Uh, so that way you can, uh, can get going. Cause you're one person that I would actually like to, uh, see have a podcast, uh, because you have a gift of the gab, uh, are very interesting and have, uh, fun takes on things. So I would definitely like listen to you, um, have conversations with people, uh, like you're saying before, like, it's fun. It, it like, it, it's, uh, like being able to kind of hang out with, with friends that you hadn't seen in a while and kind of, yeah. and, uh, which is like kind of funny, like, cause all I post on my like Facebook timeline are, uh, like podcast and stuff. And so if people are like, Oh, what have you been up to? Uh, I like, I'm like, well, just listen to my podcast. I basically podcast. Like I tell you <laughs> anything you want to know and more, probably more than you want to actually know about me. I will tell you in the podcast. <laughs> so like, cause I don't have kids or a family. So this is my kids and family post, you know, I that, love it. I that love anybody it. else does. So, so yeah, I would no, I would love to see you, uh, like, like have a podcast i think it would do uh do very well so i'm uh i'm down for the cause uh whatever. you think my podcast could be as big as joe rogan's podcast bigger 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 <laughs> i see it I, I see dollar signs yes yes you'll dude, you're gonna have one of those scrooge mcduck pools bro <laughs> <laughs> i'd love to have it I would love to have a swimming pool. You know that a yeah. swimming pool would be beautiful. My yard's not really set up real good for a swimming pool, but I'd love to have one. Hey, goals. 
goals goals the, goals uh, that's it that is uh the cuz uh yeah i would also like to see greg have a uh have a podcast too yeah. cuz uh he is another very interesting fellow that uh like i'm always like uh like i love talking to that guy man like uh like i enjoy his uh his insights on things and and yeah he's just all around like good dude uh, yeah he he's someone who is just very talented and um as well as talented just a, a a great person to talk to he's a great listener and he's a great speaker as well so yeah, he's got a lot going for him for sure mm-hmm. it's, uh the uh so yeah hopefully uh sometime this year you guys can uh what I what I think we need is uh, we need a film uh, since since you've got some Hollywood experience mm-hmm. with you and Greg, you know. I'm let's thinking do it. Maybe two cops, you know. You guys can be cops. Uh, let's do it. Um, you are speaking my language, man. Like uh, that is something that I want to do um, because from all of my time spent in Los Angeles. The one thing I learned is that I don't have to be there <laughs> to, <laughs> to like to make what I want to make um, because yeah. I, like uh, and I can pull it off for much less money out here. Yeah, and well, your show your show that was on Amazon was pretty cool. What was it called again? Uh, Job Guys. Job Guys. That was a pretty cool show. Yeah, it's and it thank you and it and it proves that. Like, you can do stuff outside the system that actually looks good when you have, like, f- at least, like, mildly competent people <laughs> with talent. And it's, they're very competent. Uh, like, so, imagine, when, yeah, so, it's possible, man. Like, and, and that's what, what I want to teach people, is that it is possible to make great things outside of a system that we've been accustomed to. Like, it, it is... Sure. Like it's possible to make good film and TV outside of Hollywood. You can do it, um, and and one of the things out here that I think people don't necessarily realize or overlook is that, like, people in the South area, you know, from like Louisville down to Nashville, uh, like this whole like area is just like so full of like incredibly talented people. Very true. This is true. You know, and there is actually a lot of film stuff that happens here. I mean, Nashville's got a bit of, of stuff going on. Yes, um, Nashville is that, uh, is starting to uh, really uh, move into a lot of the film and TV stuff. Like, I know uh, Melissa Joan Hart lives there. Uh, and so she's trying to get, you know, the uh, a lot of my favorite comedians moved to Nashville. Like, uh, Yeah, I heard about that. I actually heard it from your podcast. Yeah, dude. Like, so I, I actually want to go down to Nashville so I can go to Zany's because I really want to see uh, Josh Wolf and Theo Vaughn, and I know mm-hmm. they play there a lot. Uh, and and so, because uh, I know Josh, uh, oh man, he's so fun, man. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Josh Wolf, uh, but he's he's such a good comedian. Uh, he plays at Zany's a lot. He works out his material there. Um, That's cool. I actually got to be on his podcast once. Well, he does oh, a, a live stream called uh, High Live with Josh Wolf, and he sends the link out and lets the first like fifteen or so people like click on it. And while he's doing his live stream, he just like will randomly pull in like one of the uh, one of the audience members that you know he's like sit in the back room and uh, and listen to his podcast. And so he'll uh, pull in one of us just like real randomly. And so I've actually got to be. Uh, uh on there um and so it was super cool i got to i was wearing one of my johnny no pants shirts and he was like what's on he was like what's on your shirt and like and so like i was like oh this is my cartoon character like my comic book um and so yeah i really want to see uh really want to see that dude perform Um, there's a i saw i've been to zany's once and i saw hannibal burris uh oh dope did some comedy there he's he's pretty funny um mm-hmm. 
you know there's also another comedy club out here called out east comedy club you know that may be something to to check out as well uh you know because there's a pretty good local comedy scene here as well okay. uh, it, it seems like you know i i admire comedy and i always thought because like you know i talk in between my songs live and i i try to be funny and and i've found you know i'm pretty successful at being funny in between songs but it's just funny because i thought oh well comedy will be a piece of cake you know i'll just do a stand-up comedy set at one of these comedy nights and i found very quickly that like you know when i'm when i'm doing these little comedy bits at a show i can just you know go right into a song when they start to crash but like yeah. live man that's a yeah just comedy that's you know you're just stuck crashing <laughs> it's uh no i uh i i did it once uh and it wasn't bad like so i know exactly what you're saying because like uh, you know i went like in college like because i was in for ministry so i learned went to school for public speaking and you're trained to be funny and use anecdotes and and stuff and so uh I related to music when I was doing my set because I had like a list, whole list of jokes planned out for my set list where I, I picked like each joke as like a, uh, in my head, I related it as a song. And so when I got on stage immediately, like, cause there was only like four or five people there at the open mic. I was just like, okay, about three of these jokes aren't going to work. And so like I swapped them out for other jokes in the set and, and it went fine, like, but I was expecting it to be a nightmare, and so it kind of freaked me out that I didn't completely bomb, but I know exactly what you're saying, like, having a song to jump into is, is so, is like, it's such a relief, because you can be like, well, I'm losing them, here's the song, everybody, put your hands up. <laughs> right, right, exactly, yeah, that's the that's the funny thing about it yeah i i don't know that i was funny at all but you know i gave it a shot i am i imagine you were like i uh i imagine you were pretty funny the uh because you are a uh pretty good uh pretty good speaker and uh highly entertaining maybe you should just do that where you're uh for your songs as soon as you feel like you're losing them just start freestyle rapping yeah <laughs> i could do that like that would that would catch on and uh and you know and if it, so maybe try that next time i'm yeah. gonna give it a shot maybe i'll give it another whirl i got a friend that uh he he does a little bit of comedy his name is dale j gordon he's okay cool. he's really funny he'd be a good guy for you to meet i think you'd like him. uh well now that i'm out here let's uh let's hook it up i'm uh familiar with uh mr gordon uh, yeah. So, so yeah, let's 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 hook it up. I'm definitely uh, down for uh, for hanging out with him and uh, expanding my my friend group. Cause uh, you got to, you do, you do. It, it's uh, yeah. No, it 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 it's, that's actually been one of the cool things about being back here is uh, actually hanging out with people again. Yeah. Uh, like, cause yes. after the pandemic hit, like everybody just kind of like scattered, like I would hit people up and like, eventually people just stopped responding. <laughs> so I was like, all right. It was, it was kind of like that here too. Um, at first, you know, I think uh, a lot of people were, were definitely, I, I, I mean, I kind of was too just concerned about, you know, catching COVID from somebody, especially like, uh, if, if you if you know you had one friend that you knew was still going out and partying with everybody and they're just like hey you know man I can come crash at your your spot it's kind of like oh yeah well uh yeah think about that but but you know since <laughs> vaccines have kind of kicked in i think it's uh it, it's a much safer world as far as that's concerned and you know i i uh i think you know we we've got to live our lives and you know i i one thing that was kind of fun was we were doing we kept doing movie nights during the pandemic but we would do them outside so Mm -hmm. i remember it started during the summer like that we would we would do movie nights and we would we would do them outside at my house and uh we had a big birthday party where 
it for me for my 40th birthday party i i showed it we did a we did a movie night outdoors and then we we did a couple more after that and i remember there was this one in particular where it was just like it started getting pretty cold and so we were all outside just wrapped up in blankets and bathrobes and and funny hats you know watching watching <laughs> some movie <laughs> nice um which I'm I'm glad that we I'm glad that we don't have to do them like that now. I'm glad we're back to doing indoors. However, those were unique experiences and, and good friend experiences in the end, I think. But yeah, I think we were we were all even masked up while we were watching. So we were outdoors wearing masks in the cold, watching a movie with, you know, several layers on. The uh hey. Come uh, those those types of things uh are you know a great uh bond building experiences so yeah you know you know if that had been a, the funny thing is it was a movie night you know during the pandemic people still showed up for it but if it would have been a hip-hop show nobody would have shown up for it <laughs> 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 i got it. yeah we're gonna do a super safe hip-hop show you know it'll be sanitizer it'll be outdoors you know everybody's required to wear a mask like no one would have showed up <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm busy. The, uh, yeah, the, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons, uh, like, way back in the day when I was, like, uh, booking stuff a lot, like, I, I eventually got to where I was pretty much only booking, like, mixed genre shows. The, uh, because I realized that I could get more people to come to a show if, like, I paired it with, if I paired, like, a hip-hop act with, like, a metal or punk band and, like, vice yeah. versa. Um, like, and so in, um, response, a lot of my friends that, uh, that were in like metal and punk bands and stuff like that would book me on their show because like having a hip hop artist, uh, just sort of brought in an extra layer to the show that they were doing. And, and like, I really found that the, uh, <clears throat> the mixed genre shows tended to go over the best. Like you usually got the most people to actually stay through the whole show. That's really cool. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure what the secret code is for shows these days. Um, it, I will say, you know, I've I'm I've had a couple out. good ones. <laughs> yeah, you're about to find out. I've had a couple good ones in the last year. Um, I think I've done, you know, four or five, and there were there were a couple that I've done that were were definitely pretty exceptional. So I, you know, I, I've got hope for the future of it. And we'll, Me too. We'll see what happens. Um, have you been playing shows with state parks at all as well as, uh, yeah, Spoken? I was doing a lot of state park stuff whenever I released the album. And then I just kind of, you know, have just kind of focused on nerd now. I, you know, I guess if someone offered a suitcase full of money for a state parks show, I would definitely get the band together and do okay. it. Uh, you know, but it is a lot to manage like different people um on tour and yeah with the band like with spoken nerd i can you know uh, with my wife jen and i can get in the prius and drive anywhere and play a show and you know it goes pretty well um whereas state parks you know there's there's like other moving moving parts so i I have to tote around a bunch of equipment, you know, so usually I'm renting a van. I'm, I'm uh, taking like, you know, at least a minimum of like two dudes with me and right. like all their equipment and stuff. And so it ends up being a lot of expense without like necessarily the, the payoff that, that is there with spoken nerd even. So like, it kind of makes more sense for me to just focus on this. And then, you know, if I want to do a state park song, I just take a guitar with me and, and play one, you know, I've, which I've done some of that, but yeah, I just, you know, that's kind of been the, I, I'm very glad I did the project and I'm glad that I got to tour with it because it, it kind of, it kind of got all that rock and roll out of my system in a sense. <laughs> but <laughs> so, hey man sometimes you have to dude i have a weird alternative rock album that i had to get out of my system <laughs> yeah so. yeah i mean it's good i mean you know and i think i i occasionally it's it's always really weird when someone recognizes me from state parks rather than 
spoken nerd i'm like man was there like four of you guys that would know that but <laughs> yeah it's uh it's just a different it's a different animal for sure it, no it was cool i was just kind of curious i didn't know if you guys had played shows around not touring or anything but i didn't know if you'd uh played any shows around nashville or had uh yeah. or had or had just like uh written any new songs just to because it's a fun project and i do like you know you're more punk rock rock stuff like i do like that nice. genre of music and so uh you guys uh were a fun band yeah we we did uh several nashville shows and then we did a couple like kind of smaller tours you know that were just like basically weekend warrior things um but yeah we we did we did that for a little season and then you know um i mean it could come back but i i don't really know that it will anytime soon i i've kind of so i've messed around a little bit with the idea of doing like you know some friends of mine were like well you gotta do at least like a seven inch or something or some kind of merch drop you need to put out something else at state parks and i i just kind of like you know i don't want to force anything and i think like the thing about state parks is when i was writing those songs for that album like i mean it was it was like anything that i get really into doing it was it was the biggest thing in in that moment to me so it was something that had to happen and Mm -hmm. right now i feel that way about the album i'm the spoken nerd album i'm working on and even like the singles that i'm doing the movie uh inspired single songs and stuff like that but i haven't felt that way about anything that i any ideas that i've messed around with for state parks um you know i've kind of played around a little bit but and and i've had some ideas that i felt were were cool but but nothing's hit me like I've got to present this to the world. This must come out. You know, nothing is, has felt like that. So I just, so I haven't forced it, you know, but I mean, you know, uh, I'm 42 now. I'm going to be alive for at least another 30 days. Uh, so I would say, I mean, we're guaranteed at least, you know, a hundred years on earth, um, at least. So I, I would say in the next, uh, 60 years, I, I could possibly come up with another album. That feeling may hit again. Nice. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, uh, no, that's awesome. I, uh, uh, like especially with people that have different interests and different genres of different things it, it's uh it's funny how inspiration strikes for different projects that are going on um you know like uh so that that's cool that you're uh like digging in deep uh with uh with spoken nerd stuff the uh is there uh and so i'm assuming you have another uh project in the pipeline uh yeah i have one that's pretty close to being finished uh all the songs are written um tracked i've got you know basically post-production stuff that we got to do and and there's um there's a couple things that need to be recorded one of those is horns Mm -hmm. but but basically yeah we're we're kind of there with the with another album and i've I've already got an idea for the next thing. So it's kind of, it's, it's, I'm kind of in that zone now. I'm, I'm very excited about it. It's I'm working with a guy who's a little more of a hip hop producer than I've ever worked with before, you know, cause I've, I've worked with a lot of rock and roll guys, at least for the last 10 years. So this, this fella, um, he he produces all kind you know any kind of hip-hop you can imagine he 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 works in so i'm i'm pretty excited about dropping this i think it's gonna be uh it's quite a bit different than anything i've released but i think it's gonna be good and i think people are gonna like it so nice and people are gonna like it people are gonna like it nice i'm no i'm looking uh i'm looking forward to it i uh oh man okay so uh, I was kind of sad that I didn't, I, I, uh, I, I haven't, uh, gotten there with, uh, washing all of my old clothes. Uh, but I found a, like, uh, a bunch of old stuff, uh, th- uh, that I need to, uh, go through. Like I found some spoken nerd shirts. I've got the, uh, oh, snap. Which ones do you have? Uh, the glasses and mustache one, uh, 
the uh, Apocalypse Awareness Day. No, no, no. The uh, which one is the one that has the Loch Ness monster on it? Or the yeah, it has like the it's gray and it has like the werewolf and all that. Yeah, the, yeah, the and, orange and then, like, border. And dinosaur. Yeah, that's uh, that's the Apocalypse Awareness Day shirt. Okay, yeah. So I've got that one. Um, I had it was oh man kind of shredded uh but i had the uh spoken nerd the superman one. Oh man that was the that was the worst shirt i've ever had printed it, it was uh i found that <laughs> but uh mice had gotten a hold of it i was i was very sad when i saw yeah they probably mm-hmm. didn't even like it um, <laughs> I was I was I selling the, those uh, shirts on that tour we went on. Yeah, yep. That is the, that's so funny. That's the funniest tour because I just remember booking it, and in my head, the goal was to get as far out as we could. Like I was like I was like, okay, we've got like three weeks, so we've got to make sure. So I made sure all the drives were especially long. And you remember that. I- yeah, no, I mean, we I was, I was, nah, we were both doing that. I was prodding. Are you kidding me? I was the one prodding you on. I was like, yeah, man, yeah, dude, let's do it. Let's go. Like, uh, we're gonna tour the entire California. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And so, no, I definitely, uh, uh, no, I, yeah, no, I was the one prodding you on. I was glad <laughs> we, I was glad we did that because we had been, you know, just doing the weekend warrior stuff, like, yeah, for a good year or so before we before we did that tour like where we were you know constantly driving out to weird ass spots in alabama and uh like uh like uh florida and mississippi and (laughs) like yeah (laughs) like staying with some weirdos (laughs) yeah it was uh being like like man i'm glad i'm with uh someone i trust because uh <laughs> <laughs> that's so it's so funny like it's just so funny thinking about that now because like you know the way i book now i uh and i kind of i've kind of gotten away from this a little bit because i realized that i was starting to book shows that maybe weren't as good just to keep the drives short so okay but but like i try to you know if it's over five hours it's definitely like okay there better be some like you know some kind of perk to this you know what i mean right and and i remember like then i was just like okay so uh We've got this much time. We've got to cover this much of the United States. We we haven't even done the East Coast, <laughs> you know. Like <laughs> we're doing we're doing the Midwest, the South, and the West Coast. Let's see if we can throw the East Coast in there real quick too. <laughs> and the worst part about this is, I wish I could say I learned my lesson from us going out. But the next tour <laughs> I booked, I did the same thing. I remember I did the tour with Kurz and Bobby. Oh yeah, and- yeah drop jaw and it was it was the same thing it was just like and all of us were like that like we're all just like oh yeah yeah we're gonna i I remember playing one night like we played eugene oregon and then our next show is in salt lake city and (laughs) i remember making a drive in the just in the middle of the night you know and Corey drop jaw was driving and we, he hit a he hit a deer a deer came out and we hit this deer on the drive and it was it was uh it was pretty scary you know this was kind of in a little mountain area and then i remember we listened to dan uh listener's poem about the deer you know i'm a deer caught in the headlights for your life and it, it was like man that song really means so much more now that we just hit a deer hit you a know deer. it's well <laughs> no i mean those crazy things do happen like because i remember uh, like my car, like we had that show booked in Oregon and then my car broke down on the way to Los Angeles and it was like yeah. a, like a 10 hour drive. And we like, just like, like fortunately just like rolled into the spot, like right when we were, uh, getting ready for warm up and just sort of like went right into the, uh, to the show. Like, like right after that, barely made it, uh, like a boss. Yep. And so, no, it is, it is a good idea to, uh, 
for for some for some shows to to have a shorter drive in between the uh destinations <laughs> yeah like, to prevent uh to prevent things like that from happening especially if you're driving instead of flying uh but it, it's no it, it's so funny i uh I'm actually looking forward to doing some uh, weekend warrior stuff because uh, where I'm at in central Kentucky, like I've got Louisville, Cincinnati, Nashville, Bowling Green, where I can like, you know, basically tour for like two weeks and just stay at home the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you want to drive home after every one of them. <laughs> oh, well, no, I mean, I'm like, you know, like I can hit up a show like you're you know, saying stay the night in the town and then go home. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. And then go home and do my thing during the week and then go out again on like Thursday or so to where I'm not, you know, you can. Uh, so I'm actually kind of looking forward to uh, getting into doing some stuff like that where where it's uh, not really a hindrance on. uh you know, day to day life, but I still get to go out and and get the uh, the illusion of of touring. Yeah, no, I feel that. Well, that's a. I guess you kind of got it like that with your job too, right? Because like at a bar, like everybody wants the weekend shifts, right? Oh, because of the tips. I don't have. Uh, oh, I am gainfully unemployed right now. So. Oh, I thought you worked at that bar. No, I just no, I just. You drink. just been drinking there? No, I just drink a lot. <laughs> I've been telling everybody you work in a bar. And I'm like, hey, he works in this really cool bar. It's like no. this bar. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I'm just hanging. I actually don't even drink that much. The, uh, the, uh, like, I went and hung out there last night, and I, ended, I just had a PBR. Like that, that, that's my budget right now. Uh, so that guy with the beard works there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's my buddy John. Yeah, John's I thought it was your coworker. No, no. That's like uh, John was like one of my, one of my best friends like back in the day, and so he works there, and so I go in there and uh, hang out with uh, with him and uh, and like a bunch of other uh, friends from town uh, while he's working. I like it. I like it. That's yeah. That's funny because I I really I I thought I. I just, you just shattered my vision. I was like, man, he's working at this uh, bar. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, like they're they may be needing a bar back uh, soon, so uh, I would I would totally That's love tight. doing that. The uh, there's a uh, yeah there's another there's another really cool spot. It's like a a, a swanky burger place slash bar uh, mm-hmm. that's right next door um, that I'm that I may get on at two okay so the uh no i wanted to give myself uh some settling in time uh the like because my parents have been uh helping me and so uh because i have a tendency to just jump into shit and so i kind of wanted to see like the lay of the land like what's going on and um uh, and one of the things i realized so fortunately i'm glad i waited on everything because i'm used to california prices and so, yeah. like, after about two weeks here, two and a half weeks here, I, I it occurred to me that I don't have to come up with anywhere near as much money as, as I'm used to having to come up with, you know? That's amazing. And so, like, because I managed to live in L.A. on next to nothing, so... Uh, and then I realize I'm like, oh, cool, like, I can, uh, like, I don't necessarily have to go get a job at the factory. I can, uh... I can actually get by on finding like a cool bar job or something and, uh, and, and do my thing there and leave me open to be able to play music, do comic books and, and podcast. And, uh, you know, cause like I said, I'm interested in having fun, man. Like I feel that I'm, I'm going out on the fun train, baby. Woo woo. You gotta have fun. Yes. You remember that Cheryl Crow song that uh, she says, all I want to do is have some fun. Yes. That's, that's it. True words of wisdom from Cheryl Crow. And on that note, sir, I thank you for your time. It's been uh, incredibly generous. Uh, Go ahead and plug yourself, man. I will uh, tell people where they can find you and what you have going on. Can you play the Cheryl Crow song like in the background while I'm saying this? No, because uh, once it gets monetized, YouTube will strike it. 
All so, right. So yeah. can you sing it right now as I plug my links? All I want to do. You can check out my music. It's spokennerd.bandcamp.com. Also, follow me on Twitter as uh, at uh, Spoken Nerd. I think that's it, or it might be at Nathan Conrad. Also, check me out at ghettoblastermagazine.com. I like to review films. I have a lot of new film reviews, old film reviews you can look at. Hey, I'm Spoken Nerd. Peace. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for... Uh for tuning in please go check out everything spoken nerd uh nathan has going on uh the links will all be in the description everybody uh thank you for tuning in i'm grateful uh hit the like button hit the share button and i will catch you guys on the next one thanks for checking out the play nice podcast uh, i would appreciate it if you would uh check out my website trashcanconductor.com i am an artist I do uh, cartoons. I've got a fun cartoon called Awkward Ghost Moments. You can check that out there. I've got a uh, adult humored comic, uh, a mature humor comic, uh, Johnny No Pants. Uh, I also do music. Uh, you can uh, get that over on Bandcamp. There's a link to it there. Uh, you can uh, you can also get get merch. I uh, I sell things. I have fun t-shirts, uh, coffee mugs, and things like that. And uh, if you would also like to follow me on any of the social medias, you can find me at Trash Can Conductor. Uh, and there are also links to everything up at the uh, website, trashcanconductor.com. So thank you much, very much for uh, checking it out. And I hope to see you again soon.